This video demonstrates how the Kalman filter on the CHR6D can be tuned to improve performance. As of February 26, 2010, all CHR6D units shipped from CH Robotics come with a built-in extended Kalman filter for pitch and roll angle estimation. The basic idea behind the filter is this. If the sensor is not accelerating, then the onboard accelerometers can be used to detect gravity and hence estimate pitch and roll angles. In general, however, the sensor might be moving around and vibrating so that in the short term, the accelerometers can't be trusted. This is where the rate gyros come in. Since rate gyros are less sensitive to acceleration, they can be used to estimate changes in pitch and roll in the short term. But angle estimates produced by rate gyros tend to drift over time. The onboard extended common filter is used to combine accelerometer and rate gyro measurements in a way that removes long-term drift and that removes the negative effect of transient vibrations. At least that's the idea. In practice, you have to make trade-offs between trusting the rate gyros and trusting the accelerometers. When the filter trusts rate gyros more, it is less sensitive to acceleration and more sensitive to non-zero gyro biases. On the other hand, if the filter trusts accelerometers more, it is more sensitive to bad acceleration and less sensitive to non-zero gyro biases. On the CHR6D, the extended common filter is tuned by adjusting the process variance, or if you like, the process noise. The higher the process variance, the more the accelerometers are trusted. I have the CHR6D configuration utility open. The pitch angle estimate is displayed on the top right graph, and the roll angle estimate is displayed on the bottom right graph. The process variance that's used in the filter is displayed on the text box on the left hand side of the display. Right now the process variance is set at 50, which is pretty low. The sensor should therefore be relatively insensitive to acceleration. I'm going to slide the sensor back and forth along the top of the table, like so. And uh, as soon as that spike goes away, we can see how much the vibration is affecting the angle estimate. Some of this change in the angle estimate we're seeing is actually changing the angle, but the vibration, the high frequency stuff, comes from vibration. And if you, if you look at the scale, you can see that the magnitude of the error is less than one degree with the process weight set that low. Okay, now I'm going to change the process weight to 65,000, which is about as high as you can set it on this device. So I'll commit it and watch the pitch and roll angle estimates when I commit this change. Hey, you'll notice that they change. That's because at the moment there are uncalibrated non-zero gyro biases so that when the accelerometers are trusted more it actually pulls the angle estimate closer to the actual value. So you can see that it's less sensitive to rate gyro bias problems. But at the same time, if I vibrate it as before, Notice that the amplitude of the air is much higher than it was before. So how you set the process variance will depend entirely on your specific application. If you were to mount the sensor on a rotorcraft, for example, you might want to set the process variance very low to reduce the effect of vibrations. On the other hand, if you were mounting the sensor on a boat, say doing platform stabilization, and accelerations would be fairly minimal, then you'd want to set the process weight very high, and that would reduce the effect of gyro bias errors.